Playoff baseball is just around the corner here at Oriole Park at Camden Yards. And to help me break down game one and this entire series, we've got our Mass and Orioles insider, Steve Molesky. Steve, a bit rainy here today. The Orioles are trying to fit in a workout here behind us. Hopefully the rain clears out for tomorrow for some playoff baseball. Hopefully, uh, and we get this place rocking like it was last year. Those games against Texas were amazing. The crowd needs to bring it. We know they will. And it'll be a great home field advantage for the Orioles who earned the right to play home for the next two games, maybe the next three. Yeah, well, the Orioles fans are going to be in for a treat tomorrow with this game one pitching matchup. Corbin Burns and Cole Reagans, two of the hottest pitchers in baseball in the month of September. Let's start with Burns. The cutter has been a lot better recently. He has looked a lot better recently. Tell me about that pitch and his recent success. He made some changes and he made some tweaks with his cutter, which is big news because this is the bread and butter pitch for this guy when he won the Cy Young Award and ever since. I mean, the cutter is a big pitch for Corbin Burns, but his ERA in August was over seven. He was giving up a ton of runs and he had to make an adjustment. I think he backed off velocity on it a little bit. The movement is better. The command in New York was exceptional. That might have been the best cutter he's had all year. His ERA is a little over one in September. He's pitching great. And I think the Orioles are excited that he found his cutter just in time for October. Now, unfortunately for the Orioles, they have to face another starting pitcher whose ERA was just over one in September. And that's Cole Reagans. He leads the American League in strikeouts per nine this season. What makes him so difficult to hit? He's just got a lot of great stuff. He's a big swing and miss guy. Uh, Reagan's tied Tarek Skubal of the Tigers for the best swing and miss percentage in the American League this year. So, I mean, that right there tells you all you need to know. This guy's got big stuff. Here's something that's quite remarkable. In April, he pitched twice against the Orioles. He shut him out over six and a third on one hit. 17 days later, he didn't get out of the second inning. He gave up seven runs and nine hits to the Orioles in one and a third. That is easily his worst outing of the year by far. He said today, yes, I haven't forgotten that game, uh, but he didn't really have a reason why it went that poorly for him. He said, I just didn't execute. Um, he said it will not be extra motivation for him tomorrow. He's motivated for all starts, obviously a playoff start. Yeah. But it is interesting that the Orioles got to him so big in April. Yeah, and he won't forget that start. Hopefully the Orioles won't forget that start either. They'll remember exactly what they did in that second inning to knock him out of the game. Now, Steve, let's talk about the roster as we get ready for the wild card round here. Right. A few cuts have to be made. Let's start on the offensive side. There are guys like Emmanuel Rivera on the bubble, but he's played great as of late. How do you anticipate this position player breakdown? I mean, I think we probably are looking at 12 pitchers and 14 position players. That is what we have seen most wild card teams do the last couple years. That would allow the Orioles to carry an extra position player, whether it's Slater or Jackson Holiday, Rivera, they could all make it. Heston Kerstad, they could all be on with 14. And then 12 would be one short of the pitcher they've used in the regular season. But remember, it's only two or three games, so they can get away with it. It could be that Albert Suarez, because he threw so deep on Sunday, is held back for the next series should they advance and Kate Povich does make the AL uh, wildcard roster. All of this we'll know in the morning. That's when they has to be set. So on the topic of Suarez, if he doesn't make this wildcard roster, is that an indication to you that the Orioles see him as a starter for the DS? Or if he does make this roster, is it okay, maybe they'll use him in the bullpen and they'll just figure it out as they go in the starting earth? Well, I think they like him as a starter. They know he can pitch in the bullpen too. So he's got the flexibility to go either way. If the Orioles won this series with KC in two games, whoever doesn't start game two for Baltimore, whether it's Kramer or Eflin, could go game one in the next round. If it goes three games, Albert Suarez could go game one. Um, Burns would be on short rest, so he's probably not starting until game two of the ALDS, but let's get there first. Yeah, let's get to the DS before we talk about pitching scenarios. But, Steve, thank you so much for breaking this one down with us, and we're looking forward to some playoff baseball. You got it.